Hello and welcome, I am Roomba. Thank you for joining me. We're on episode number three of Let's Conquer the World and Get Stuff. I'm gonna break records. Okay, I'm gonna ev eventually know what the name of my own series is. All right, so we have new people we can appoint because I've just I've just done this. I ran out of people and I had to create a whole bunch of random vassals by using the Invite Holy Man to court. Now, a holy man, you would think, is gonna have high learning, but it's completely random. I mean, you've got some that are high learning, some that are high... Whatever, it doesn't really matter, so... Um, we got rid of all of them, got rid of all the land, kept our primary holdings that we're going to hold on to, and now we're going to appoint new people because we should have better people overall. Or not. Got a 23 learning fella. Now, Sardika is the wrong religion and wrong culture, so we're going to try to convert the religion here. We're going to study technology in Sinope, because at the very start of the 867 campaign, Sinope actually has better technology than Constantinople does. See, this is 476, Sinope is 676. So we're study technology there, get the most tech spread we can. We're going to not collect taxes, because my income is going to be quite terrible. Because the land that I kept all has this recently conquered penalty for about a year. So for now, let's just research economy tech in the capital. We will research military tech in the capital as well. And diplomatic relations is not very important right now. They all love me. Everyone's thrilled to be part of the realm. My grandson needs an educator. I'll do it. Or actually, I can't do it, okay. Let's go with a uh, diplomat person. We'll have this Hungarian fella here do it and apparently there's a second one okay so now we can create a whole bunch of duchies and uh, we're not going to we're just not going to do it because if we create the duchies these people are going to desire them right now they love me they have no concerns in the world it's a lot of extra people, but uh, I don't mind managing it for now. Now, fortunately, because we have all this prestige and piety um, from doing that, we can actually declare invasions right away. But there is a better way to do it. We'll take the prestige. we we'll become exalted among men. Next, we'll take the improved learning ambition, because that's really the best opportunity that I have here. What we can do is we can actually toggle looter. Now, I'm going to be very abusive. I mean, very abusive. I want to conquer the world as fast as possible. So we're going to do this. We've got three armies, right? I'm going to throw that guy in jail. And then ransom him back for money. Got plenty of money, but I'm not going to create the duchies. I am going to start building up some barracks and things just so we have more troops we build the militia training grounds oops not castle fortifications because increasing the troop count will help out with the magyar decision notice that it's at six thousand right now we need more troops overall so we're going to do the magyar thing in like two years and until then we'll expand westward now to avoid having any complicated problematic people attacking me we're going to go looter, 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 and go here, here, and here, and you're going to see how glorious this gamey strategy can be. But hey, it's within it's within the confines of the game mechanics. It's the same checksum. I'm not cheating in any way. I'm just going to conquer the world as fast as physically possible. So we're going to burn everything to the ground. Which is fine, because the army, like, the land doesn't really provide you with much levy for a couple years anyway. And it takes, like, I think one or two years for the burned modifier to go away. But more importantly, what we're going to do is basically prevent the enemy from ever calling in allies. This guy doesn't have any allies, and he'd be very easy to conquer anyway. But, um... You'll see just why this is so effective. I 
I think the next target's gonna probably be both of these two. I'm actually... T no. Um, tempted. No, yeah, we're gonna do these these guys. We're gonna do Balaton. Okay, so it's gonna take a little while longer because we're sieging it, but the second siege doesn't take very long. You'll see. Just wait. It's no different than being at war, except that we're technically looting. Now, the reason that it's going to work is because when you loot, typically what happens is you burn it, right? And you take some money, and you take the loot bar, and you have a chance to capture prisoners. But when you flag yourself as a looter, you get this hostile towards. Every single day that you have somebody raiding in an enemy's land, you are hostile for about a half of a year. You can use that hostility flag to actually siege their lands. As long as at least one person is considered a raider, it works. So what we're going to do is we're going to now raise up... Um, oop, we inherited something up there. Somebody must have died. I really don't want that, so let's just get rid of it. I want it to get converted. Um, I actually don't have any levy, do I? We're going to raise up this levy, the entirety of it, just because we can. Bring it down. Actually, you know what? There's really no point in that. Let's just get rid of almost all of it and just send you guys down. Flag them as looters. Bring them down here. And they are the. this is going to be the army that keeps us hostile. As long as they arrive within a year. Now, once we've burned down everything, like we have here, we unloot it, and watch what happens. We immediately start sieging. And we stay hostile because we are continuing to loot. We are aggressive. So this one is an unlooter. I want militia training ground, please. More troop count. This is kind of ticking slowly. I guess we'll go up to speed. Oh, he captured his wife. We get some money for her, probably. Some random kid guy. Captured a bunch of people that he seems to care about. We also get the opportunity to siege and loot everything twice, which is nice. Now I'm going to send these guys home. Okay, so now we're going to take half of this army, the larger one, and unloot it so that they can start sieging. We're basically very gamily pre-sieging this war. And as soon as this one gets fully sieged, notice how that, that timer is still at 180 days. And it's because I've got a looter in his lands. It's not actually doing any looting. There's nothing to loot. But it's doing what it can. I assume this army to help out the siege speed. I'm going to do this on the first couple, just because it's very simple. But I'm not going to do it on every single target. We don't really need to do it on all of them. Give me money. And the final one. Now, we still are hostile for another half a year. Now, as long as we get out of all of his land, and then before the timer ends up, we have to disband our levy. We can declare war on him. The invasion of Serbia, for instance. Which costs us basically nothing to declare with the Tengri Casaspelli, which is why they're so overpowered. We declare the war. We're at 100%. We win the war. We're done. That's our land now. Now, granted, it's on fire. And it will be looted for two years. But who cares? It's our land. So yes, let's give this land away. Oh, I'm going to go through and do this thing again. New vassal, new vassal, new vassal. And 
there should just be three that we have to give away. And there we go, we've conquered some more land. Now, every time we do this, the decision to create Hungary should get stronger. It's up to 7,000. But what's really going to make it stronger is when this thing goes away. And we actually get our levy up to full strength. Because it's all based on the overall strength of the realm when you do it. I've seen it as high as like 50, each regiment being 15,000. We want to do it before our current character dies, because our son's not likely to raise nearly as large of an army. So, we could do that again. But it might be easier to just declare the war outright. But you can see how gamey that is. I think I'm just going to declare the war outright. He can't even, like... He can't even raise his army when you do it that way. And I think at the same time we'll do a invasion of Croatia. Raise up the vassal army now. Can I actually rally the entire thing to here? Tell you two to stay, stay put. Actually, I should do it the other way. Um, no, that's a, that's a decent way to do it. And I want to prevent his army from really rallying together, so I'm going to break that siege and chase down one of the armies with this force here. Hope we don't get... I hope we don't get bopped in the head, because if we lose this character, that would be unfortunate. This ratio could be a lot better, but... Our character is one of the best fighters in the world at the beginning of the game. So, that's nice. Let's get rid of the largest army, and then send these 4,000 here. No arbitrary grands grandchildren. the army out a bit. Now we're going to combine everything again. And actually, I, I can probably just spread it at this point already. Now I want you here and you here. Carpet siege the whole thing. Yeah, this is faster. Th that gimmicky strategy is kind of interesting, but not necessary. It's much more efficient to just siege all the things. Nope, we're not going to allow you to uh, surrender. We don't want to accept the surrender until we occupy everything. Otherwise, he'll become a vassal, and he won't be very happy. Do we want to become paranoid or trusting? Trusting. Diplomacy is far more important as a governing stat if you're going to conquer the world. The extra diplomacy really improves the base opinion that people have of you. I only need the top level holding. We will use... Um, Meldrick. Okay, so we're improving our learning. That's that ambition to improve learning. Not a big deal. Okay. I don't know that I actually chose the right one. Yes, I did. Okay, so we gained two learning. Not enough to actually get the ambition satisfied. Pretty much capped out the opinion bonus that you can get from prestige. That happens at 2,000. You get plus 20 if you have 20 prestige. 2,000 prestige. So everybody loves me for the most part. The only person that doesn't love me is... We have a couple mayors who aren't at 100%. We could satisfy that by just figuring out a few plots here and there, but I'm not going to actively seek them out. Okay, so this one we occupy at least the top level holding and everything. Right, that's you. So we will offer you peace and force demands. That's good. And we'll get rid of the subholdings.
And um, I'm gonna just pile on here so we can end that war faster. I'm gonna start giving away some of these titles. And uh, this is basically rinse and repeat mode. And just doing it in the most strategic order possible to, to try to maximize this world conquest. Okay, somehow we have seven holdings, so it looks like we inherited this thing up here again. Okay, alright, well, I'll take a break here, and I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching, everyone. See you soon.